Backup Smart Help Video Settings. Once you're in Backup Smart, you can go to the settings screen. It's only one screen. It only has a few bits and pieces on it that you need to adjust. Essentially, we have a save to field. This is the default field that you can set for your downloads. You can change this on a per task basis, but the default setting is done here. Start automatically at logon is simply an option. And it's as the name suggests, you can start the application in a minimized format. And you can also tick so that when Backup Smart closes that you don't get an exit warning. Um, I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you want to choose those options or not. Maximum simultaneous connections is simply that when you load Backup Smart with a set of tasks, you may have more than one task, Backup Smart will be able to gather those downloads on a simultaneous method. So it'll try to do multiple ones at once. If you don't want that to happen because of load sharing with regards to downloading multiple things at once, you can set the maximum simultaneous connections down to one and it will only ever do one at a time. If you're running uh, the task manually, that will take pre that that simultaneous connections will take precedence. If you're running backups via the scheduler, they will always run sequentially, one after the other. So it's up to you how you want to run your backup system. The scheduler start time is simply just that. It's the time that you wish to start the jobs running. You, of course, need to have Backup Smart running in order for that to take place, which means that you need to have an account which stays on during that period of time. So if you are trying to do your backups at night time and your computer has gone to sleep, obviously the computer is not going to be able to do anything if it's in sleep mode. So I would then therefore set your backups to run at a time when you are online and you are active on the computer, but perhaps not uh, too active. The scheduler email SMTP setup, this is optional, but I recommend doing it. If you don't want to get emails every single time, simply select to include logs for only the failed tasks. That way you get an email only if a task fails or a section of a task fails. So here you can go through, put your sender name in, your sender email address in, your SMTP server. From your SMTP server, you'll have to give it a port number which is usually 25 or 26, depending on what your particular host allows you to use for your uh, account. And you give it a username and a password, and then you can test the mail, and it will send you out a test message. And you should be able to receive that test message. If you don't receive that test message, then something's not been configured correctly in the scheduler setup. That's pretty much it for the settings screen. It's very simple and not a lot of settings.